Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We are in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. We are at 419 Outdoors with Greg Hayes. Greg, thanks for inviting us over to your shop here tonight. Yeah, thank you guys for stopping in. Yeah, good times here. Uh, cool place here in Wisconsin. It's a newer shop. Tell us about 419 Outdoors. So uh, biggest question I get is what is 419? 419 is uh, Matthew's 419. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. So uh, not to get too far off, but I don't think that we can do a whole lot here without a little bit of faith. Sure. So uh, just, yeah. But uh, anyways, yeah, we opened it. We're pretty new. We're about uh, going on two years this April and uh, really focus on a professional service. Uh, everybody that fishes here or everybody that works here fishes. So uh, everybody takes home product. Everybody uses it. So when a customer stops in, they can be like, heck yeah, I use those too. And I catch them. You know, this is how I catch them. Yep. You if, if you look back up here behind us, we got all these rigs tied up. We got Ned rigs, we got drop shots, we got all this stuff tied up. We know how to tie all that stuff. So we show customers and there's a lot of people, especially this year, it's been kind of a crazy year. A lot of people venturing out, a lot of people fishing. And uh, so it's really kind of cool to educate people. And that, that's what we offer. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting year, everything going on in the world. And, and what it's meant is people aren't going to you know, they're not going to the state fairs. They're not yes. doing those things. Yep. They're not going to baseball games, basketball games, those types of things. So they're going fishing. Yep. So we're getting a lot more people into the sport in open water. And I think a lot of that's going to translate to ice season this year. Oh, definitely. We're already getting tons of interest in ice. Uh, we got ice stuff coming in uh, in September. It's going to be way earlier than last year. Last year, we had planned for like November 1st and we were calling our distributors telling them this is the end of September. Hurry up, get it to us. We got people knocking down the doors for it. So it's going to be the same thing this year, only worse. So we got stuff coming in only plenty better. earlier. Yeah, 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 <laughs> only better. You're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. we're expecting a busy year. Um, it should be fun. And what's going to happen is uh, ice is going to start forming. The yeah. People are going to want to get out of the water. So. Today we're going to talk about early season crappie fishing. My favorite. Your favorite. And Absolutely. that actually leads me to my first question. And that is, why is it your favorite? What do you love about early season crappie, season, crappie fishing? So when I was younger, um, I was probably like every other kid going out, tip up fishing for walleyes with dad. And he's sitting in a car or sitting in his old Chappelle <laughs> shack. It's got more holes in it than anything. and But uh, I, I, that wasn't me. Uh, I'm a... I, I got to constantly be on a move. Uh, I can't sit still. So when I picked up a jig stick and started crappie chasing, I just, I fell in love right away. Th this was my speed chasing these fish. They're aggressive fish. Uh, also like they're a smart fish. So there's so many times and it's frustrating when you're marking those fish and they won't bite. And I just really love that challenge aspect of it too. So it's, it's not just the, sitting and waiting and playing cards in the shack it's it's getting out there and getting after it you're a young guy mm -hmm. i just turned 30 I don't so, know. Well, you're, you're a young guy. so so how has crappie fishing changed from those days when, when dad was sitting in his truck and you're running around to now well the first jig rod that i had i think he did something like this with the line you know he kind of just wrapped yeah i just wrapped it oh, around he wrap right. he didn't even have the schoolie. <laughs> no no it just wrapped around and i'm pretty sure that that was something that dad had from when he was in high school and you know it was well, i don't know i want to tip up fish here you go and and uh you know it was really up up until a little over a handful of years ago before i even really invested into electronics so it's changed a lot for me. Uh, the electronics, the mapping, the the gear, the shacks, the float suits, like all that stuff. This whole industry has grown so rapidly in the last 10, let alone 20 years, that uh, it's really exciting to see what whatever year brings at, at, at this stage of the game. So to be successful early season crappies, we talked about gear. What kind of gear is someone going to need to be successful? Um, I go with a, I really like the Shimano Sienna reels. I use the, um, the, uh, clam, the, the premium free fall ones that I use that. And then some, some of the, um, like the deadfalls from one three. And I pair all those on a Fox river rod. I really, really, really like an ultralight rod. There's some people out there that like a little more action or, you know, a little stiffer action. I love an ultralight, the softer, the better. Especially with crappies, they have such soft mouths. I think that a really soft rod is, is kind of key. 
but uh, yeah, you know, good line. I like to throw a, a braid to a fluorocarbon leader a lot as well, just for that extra sensitivity for our, them light bites and the rest of it's all straight floral. So. A lot of new people stepping out of the water, stepping out of the ice uh, this year, but uh, some advanced folks going back out there too. But mm -hmm. I think before we start talking about kind of the tactics of fishing, we got to talk about making sure that we're going to come back safely. Yeah. Tell us about, I mean, ice safety, I think, is always important. Mm -hmm. There's there's no such thing as 100% safe ice, but I think this early season type ice fishing is really when people can get themselves into some trouble. It's when you need to be the most on your toes. You, you are 100% correct with that. Um, probably about five years ago, I bought my first ice suit. It was big. It was bulky. It wasn't real comfortable, and I, you know, it, but it worked, and it it kept me warmer than anything. I would, prior to that, I was a Carhartt kind of a guy and wet, you know, they're frozen and big and bushy on your feet. But, but that's probably the, the biggest thing is, is getting an ice, ice suit. When it comes to safety, you want something with some flow tech in it's something like the Eskimo keeper series, which is what I run right now. If I'm going to be venturing out, I have to have a float suit on. Don't care what the ice conditions, don't care what my neighbor said. Don't care what my buddy said. Got to have a, uh, have a float suit on. Uh, secondly is going to be ice picks, ice cleats, and a chipper. Those are what I'm going to use to get out onto the ice. So it's it's kind of a combination of different things, but ice safety is by far should be on everybody's mind. Come first ice, but there's just uh, stuff like that. You know, li little stuff, but investment in an ice suit's biggest in my book. Yeah, and I think that uh, having an ice suit's great. I mm -hmm. have one, you have one. People have been fishing for a long time, generally gonna have one. But for a lot of these beginners that don't have that kind of budget, I would say at the very least, make sure that if you're wearing that Carhartt, that you got a life jacket over the top yeah, of that. Yep. So that if you do go through, you have something that's gonna help you come back to the Yeah, and I, and I would look at even an, an, an auto inflating one if you're concerned about the bulkiness and stuff like that. They are a little bit more expensive, but if you got one in the boat already, I mean, what the heck, throw that thing on there. But, but I, kind of back to ice suits ice suits have come so far since their inception uh they've come so far since the first one i got five six years ago they're more they're lighter weight they're more flexible than carhartt stuff like that and the price point is really getting down there these guys are shaving the prices down and making them affordable for anybody so i i i, I can't i can't urge people enough to take a hard look at a nice suit with some some sort of float tech in it. Yeah, I'm fishing the Eskimo Legend. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier jacket yep. than you have, but I, I think if the average person put that on, I don't think they even realize that it's a flotation suit. No, it's it's very comfortable and it doesn't feel cumbersome or bulky at all. Exactly. All right, so we got out there. Time for the goods. Good ice. <laughs> Let's go fishing. <laughs> How do I find crappies early season? Uh. Probably my number one tool to start with when you're first walking out on the ice and you're just getting ready for it is don't fish history. So many people go out and they pull their shack to the same place that they pulled it up to if, since their dad, since their grandpa showed them how to do it. And they, you know, they line up the old sow tower in the green cabin with the big pine on, you know, Norfolk I Island. I think you're telling people my fishing stuff. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> but anyways, uh, is, um, Fire up the graph. I, I use a Helix series uh, ice unit for ice fishing. So it's got the Lake Master mapping in it. I run all the lake cards in it. And I erase all my waypoints, start fresh every year, and start drilling holes. That's what. That's why I, I prefer the Keeper suit. It is a little bit lighter than the Legend. I like to stay mobile, and I like to carry a pistol bit. with. Uh, I got a Milwaukee drill with the big 9 amp hour batteries on it. Carry those things around drill 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 there's a lot of times sometimes i've had years where two three outings and i wet the line once in those first two or three outings because it, it takes time those fish move you can't fish history folks can't fish history so get Don't get out there history. Drill, drill, drill. <laughs> yeah. get, get out there start drilling holes drop the graph in and just search for those fish you're gonna find fish uh, I, I fish a basin. I fish Rice Lake. That's where my store is. That's where I live. It's just become my home lake. And I, I absolutely love it. I fish the South Basin. But every year, you can go out there anywhere and, and find fish. But every year, the quality fish move. And that's something that, it, that I is what's brought me success in, in crappie fishing all year. It's not just early season for me. So 
So yeah, get out there and do your homework. So you like to fish basins. A lot of people like to be in the weeds in the early season. You're, you're a basin guy. What makes one basin better than another basin? Um, I'm going to probably say the makeup of it. I don't, I don't particularly like to fish a basin that has rock bars or sand transition stuff like that. I just want a pure muck basin. I want steep drop offs on both sides and I do want some good uh, flats with some weeds on them that, uh, cause w I do fish at a little bit different time too. That's maybe one of the other little secrets that, that I, you know, I'll unveil to you guys is I fish mornings and I don't fish most nights anymore. I fish mornings. I get up before the sun's up and I go out and I fish until the sun comes up and then it's it. And that's because I catch those fish out there in the basin. So yes, you are correct. There is a lot of people that do fish weeds early season and, um, uh, you know, I'm sure that they do well on it. However, I'm a morning guy and those fish are in the basin in the morning. And as the sun starts coming up and starts lighting up into the weeds, they go. So, and they're, they're a little harder to target. They're harder to mark there. So I just, I don't know. There's, there's something about seeing a mark coming in eight feet off the bottom, reeling up to it and working that fish. Sure. Tell me a little bit about, tell me about how you find the basin. What makes one basin better? Basins are big. They are. What part of the basin should I start? Well, that's where your homework comes into play. Uh, it's always good to check outside of those big weed flats. However, if they're not there, they could be roaming from in between there to the next weed flat. So that it, it really goes back to my original comment of drill, 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 and drill some more, and just find those fish. They're they're there. They are there. If you if you're an early riser, a lot of people work seven eight o'clock in the morning or something like that. It's perfect to get out in the morning, start drilling those holes, find those fish, and um, kind of go from there. I, I like to hop on the wheeler when there's enough when there's enough ice for it. I like to hop on the wheeler and I like to go hit those spots in front of those basins. You can really cover a lot of water pretty quick that way. So it's pretty efficient. So you make some marks, you find some fish, how are we attacking them from there? So when I pull up to an area that, that I want to start working, I'm going to drill a series of maybe eight holes and I'm going to drill probably six sets of those eight holes. I'm, I'm going to make a grid and I'm going to make that grid where there's a slight transition, not super steep transition, but maybe something over the course of, let's call it 60 to 100 feet, or maybe it drops two to four feet, just a nice gradual. And what that's going to help me do is that's going to help me key in on all those fish in 12 feet. Are they in 10 feet or are they in 14 feet? Because there really is a huge difference when it, with, with just a couple of feet. So uh, drill that grid and just start dropping the graph. And you're gonna notice you might see one mark on one, but if you bump out two feet worth uh, you know depth, you might have six marks on the graph, just like that. So, so don't always settle on the first one either. You know, Go around, check all the holes, then attack your most promising hole. And when you attack, how are you attacking? Uh, I like to throw a, a combination of things. I like to throw a Kender's K-Rip. These really came onto the scene, uh, at least for me, I'm, I'm sure that they were selling them prior, but they really came onto the scene as far as the chatter on, on forums, stuff like that, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And uh, they're, they're completely different. They're very similar to like a Z-Viber, but itty, itty bitty. And they, they come with the treble hook, so you can rig waxies on there, which works really, really, really good. This one is an, uh, a 15 millimeter, and these things are tiny. But um, you can rig these with the treble hook, with a waxie on it. But what I like to do is I like to, it's got a it's got a split ring on the back. You can take that treble hook off, and they all come with a meat hook. I put the meat hook on it right away, and uh, I put a crappie minnow on there, and that's, that's typically how I fish it. Another option that I like to use is I like to use the ice flies made by the legendary Scott Wilhelm himself. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anybody who fishes, anybody who fishes crappies know, know Scott's name. So, uh, again, super low profile, tungsten jigs, they get down fast. So, yeah, R rigged with the crappie minnow yet again. I, I, I just, I like it. And I do something a little bit different with my crappie minnow as well. You see a lot of people that use minnow heads for stuff. I like to pinch, pinch the minnow off right behind the gill plate and it's a little graphic but i think it leaves some of the guts and some of the blood and the you know the, the good scent that you're going to get out of this and then i hook it through the belly and out of the back and that lays on that jig and it flutters just right 
It's not a crappie minnow hook to the back that just looks like a bait with a shiny gold thing sticking out of its back. It really has a natural presentation. The way it falls, it really just kind of sweeps and flutters nice. So that's that's another little little secret. I, I'm giving up all the good stuff today. You gave up my fishing spot. <laughs> well, sorry. Now you're giving up your technique. <laughs> so yeah, and um, yeah, so I, that, that's really that's really kind of how my presentations. I I like to use really light line. I like to run a, a two pound test. I really like the uh, the sun line ice line. That's been really really good for me. Uh, again, matched with the Fox River 24 inch ultralight or 26 inch ultralight. And uh, nice, nice soft tip. Make so, sure those fish stay buttoned. So you're you're fishing your home water a lot. Yep. I'm assuming you're successful a lot. Yep. What happens when you're not successful? Maybe I take you somewhere else that you don't know. What do you start doing when things aren't going well? Because I think that's going to be something that people are going to run into this year, especially with a lot of new people on the ice. You're going to go out and, and not have success. What's plan B? What what should they be doing? Like that? So whenever let, let's just talk let's just use breaking down a new body of water period all the way across the board then everybody's on the same playing field when it comes to that i'm going to refer back to my hummingbird helix units with the maps on it i'm going to look at those flats that have that four to eight ten foot mark and i know that those are going to hold weeds during the summertime and into the fall so i'm going to approach it the same way that i would my normal lake and go from there if plan B isn't working, then it's gonna start looking for structure. You're gonna find in a lot of these these north these northwood lakes, crappies are either gonna be basin fish or structure fish. And by structure, you're gonna see a lot of cribs in the water, you're gonna see a lot of logs, just anything like that. Offshore, rock piles, whatever. Uh, Rice Lake just happens to be a basin lake and I just, I like that style of fishing. But if you pull up on a lake and you're not finding them in the basin, start heading for structure. That's that's always plan B. There's something about early season crappie fishing that I didn't ask you about that you wanted to talk about tonight. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Kender K rib. We've sold thousands of these things last year. They were incredibly hot. Uh, a comment that I did get back a lot on these is because they are so small, and this thing's a 164th ounce and it's 15 millimeters long. So it's it's got a little bit slower of a fall rate. And so if you are, even if it's not early season, maybe it's maybe it's January and you're fishing 35 feet of water and those crappies are suspended at 20 to 25 feet. I like to take and I like to throw a split shot either right at the split ring where I tie my line to or I'll run it up a little bit and that just helps get it down there a little bit faster. I actually have also taken, put the treble hook back on and I clipped a split shot to the treble hook itself. So any way that I can get a little bit more weight down there and get that bait down a little bit faster. Um, one thing too that we didn't quite touch on is, is fall rate. If you fish crappies, you know it's all about the fall rate for those fish. So make sure that you're paying attention to your electronics, whether it's a Markham, a Vaxlar, a Hummingbird, you name it. Make sure if you're dropping on those fish and you're seeing the marks disappear, it's too aggressive of a fall rate. Light, either lighten up your jig, change up your style, maybe go from a, a teardrop style to a kender that has a little bit slower fall rate, but just pay attention to your electronics. The fish will tell you a lot by just paying attention and just looking for those subtle details. Very cool. If people want to know more about you and 419 Outdoors, how do they find out about it? Hop on Facebook. We're pretty active on there. I got all kinds of crazy, goofy stuff going on. Um, our shop is 419 Outdoors, Rice Lake, Wisconsin. You guys can stop on in. We're located on the north end of Rice Lake, uh, right across from the Barron County Fairgrounds, 1007 Hammond Ave. Give us a call, 715-475-1211. Stop on in, check it out. We really focus on quality products with the knowledge behind it. So it's, it's a unique atmosphere. You're gonna come in here, you're gonna meet my ma, you're gonna meet my brother, you're gonna meet my my best friend. You know, it's it's a different atmosphere. So stop on in, check us out. You 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 won't be disappointed. Awesome. Greg Hayes from 419 Outdoors. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for Thank listening. Thank you guys. And I uh, hope to see you next time.